Hi, my name is Fred Bourgeois. I am the leader of a team called Team FredNet, which is Fred's Research Exploration and Development Network. It's also called Fred's Robotic Exploration Development Network. And this team really started a long, long time ago for me when I was very young and I watched the Apollo moon landing with, with a lot of the people here. That was inspirational. And so when the opportunity came up to compete in, a, in this XPRIZE competition, going back to the moon with a robotic explorer, I wanted to figure out a way to get involved. So the way that was obvious to me from my work in Silicon Valley was to try to draw in as many people as I could find who were interested in pursuing the same dream, people who had math, science, technology backgrounds, engineering backgrounds, and to call those people together in an open source, open participation project. So we sent out an announcement to a few people and they joined us. And we ended up getting uh, about 20 people originally in the first couple of weeks. And we got our first prototype rover developed, which is not shown here, by the way. Our first prototype rover was developed in about three weeks for less than $1,000. It was mostly a software project. And uh, this led to a demo running on one of the news networks, one of the NBC networks here in the US, which led to 200 people joining the team within about a course of 48 hours. That was a lot more people than I ever expected would join this team, but that showed that there really is a great interest in space. And the question I have for people here is, do you remember what it was like, the ones who were alive, do you remember what it was like watching the Apollo 11 landings? Do you remember the excitement it was to just be able to see that? And do you know what it's like to actually be able to participate in something like that? because that's what we're going for now. We're not looking for people who want to watch us land on the moon. We want to find all the people who want to be part of this. They want to participate. They don't want to sit on a couch and watch the news. They want to do something that matters. They want to change the world. And that's what the people on our team are all about. In the last year, we've had people develop these other rovers that you see on the screen now. Um, I'm going to have to point at Nikki. Um, this is a WRV-1 rover prototype, which was developed by Jörg Schneider in Castaneda, Switzerland. He's done this on his own time with his own money. Not only did uh, Jörg build this rover, but you'll see that the wheels might look a little rough here right now. This is just a prototype. But Jörg built the rover. He built the tools that he needed to build the rover. And he built the tools that he needed to build the tools to build the rover. So those wheels are, are Jorg's own custom design. The motors were, are commercial off the shelf. But that rover weighs about four kilograms, a little more than four kilograms. So we're looking at building very small systems that can achieve the goals that we need to achieve. Um, all of these designs are available on our wiki, by the way, which is wiki.teamfrednet.org. And you can read along with Jorg's progress all the way through because we're truly an open source team. All of our technology is available. Anybody can go and join in and participate. Anyone can suggest modifications to Jorg's design. Unless you can fly to Switzerland and help him with the physical construction, you're going to have to start building your own version of it, though. Uh, also pictured here is this small Pico rover. It's literally a ball. It's a self-contained rover, which should help with things like lunar dust, uh, keeping the environment out. Um, and within our wiki, there's a lot of work happening right now on the Pico rover from a university in Spain. It's run by Joshua Tristancho, who's a teacher in Barcelona. A number of his students have been helping build this rover prototype. It is based on a Lego Mindstorms model kit, which means that it is also very interestingly available for many student participants to build their own versions of, of their lunar rover. So we're getting a lot of interest from students, from very young participants, as young as eight, uh, and as old as 80. So we have a wide range of people. Uh, I should also mention our, our participants right now, our members come from 38 countries, Sean? I think we have 38 countries now on six continents. Uh, we started mostly in the US. We have uh, a lot of participants in the US, Australia, Europe, a few in Africa, and a few in South America. Um, and if you could go to the next slide, please. This is also a design you can find in our wiki. Um, I'm going to. Go through me again? Yes, I'm going to have to go through <laughs> you again. This is the structural component of our lander design. Um, this is not with the solar panels and all of the external components and the radiation shielding and the internal servers, but this shows you, again, this was developed by a guy in Australia named Ryan Weed. 
uh, along with help from Chao Nagai, who is a, a Chinese Canadian, um, and Michael Baruco in Pennsylvania. Uh, people all over the world participated in this design process. And this is also available on our wiki. You can go to wiki.xprize. Or, I'm sorry, wiki.teamfrednet.org, and not the XPRIZE site, but our site. Um, and this just shows that there's a lot of interest and there's a lot of skill available on the Internet. After all, the Internet itself was built through open participation, open collaboration, people who came together and knew they could solve a problem, so they worked together to solve it. Within our wiki, you will also find we have people working on the ground segment, we have people working on communications, we have a large communications group, actually. Uh, we have people working on radiation hardening, uh, uh, which uh, Dr. Logan might find of interest, too. We have people working on the problem of how to survive lunar nights, how to protect the equipment, and eventually how to protect people. There are people interested in many other related projects and some that are unrelated, because we really feel that this is an opportunity for all the people of the world to come together to solve very complex problems. First, we're working on the X Prize and on the Google Lunar X Prize particularly, we are trying to reach the moon, and we think that we can do that through open participation. Standing on the shoulders of giants, we can reach this goal. Uh, so please do see our website at wiki or teamfrednet.org. The wiki is at the wiki dot, and forum is a place for all the wild ideas that uh, if you have a strange idea, please come talk to us. We'd love to have you participate with us in this project because we believe that the way to succeed is through open collaboration. Can you go to the next slide, please? This is my last one. We think that the XPRIZE Foundation had a brilliant idea, revolution through competition. And we've changed that a little. We say revolution through open collaboration. If we're all working together, we can achieve the goals of reaching the moon, reaching outer space, and establishing viable communities there. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. That was fantastic.